Corsair is one of a few vendors that produces a 420 millimeter version of its all-in-one closed loop liquid CPU cooling systems. We get a lot of messages in the YouTube comment section saying how good these 420 mil coolers are and asking why they're not featured in our testing charts. Well, today we give you guys a look at how this new 420 millimeter Corsair IQ H170i Elite LCD XT performs on our test bench against the competition. But will it live up to the hype? Let's find out. Okay, so let's dive straight into this review of the new Corsair H170i Elite LCD XT all-in-one CPU cooler. You will be able to pick this up now from the Corsair web store and other online retailers such as OC UK for an eye-watering $349.99. Put into perspective, that is almost into custom loop territory. You could build an EK custom loop with a new Velocity 2 block and a D5 pump res combo for around about the same price i'm just talking a cpu loop so this is an expensive all-in-one cpu cooler to think a couple of years ago you could probably buy a decent graphics card for that and now you're looking at that kind of money just for a cpu cooler seems mind-boggling to me this is also available in a h100i version so that's a 240 millimeter 220 mil fan versions that is priced at 279.99 so that's not cheap either and there's also the h150i the 360 mil version and that is priced at 319.99 so obviously this is compatible with all current desktop cpu sockets such as intel lj1700 and amd am4 AM5 platforms. This includes a 2.1 inch IPS LCD screen mounted on top of the pump unit, 480 by 480 resolution, 24 bit color, and a 30 hertz refresh rate. That's the main feature of this cooler. The main difference between this and the uh, previous Elite LCD non XT versions is the fans. So these are not the ML fans, these are now the Corsair AF Elite fans that come with this. Obviously, this is a 400. 20 mil so this comes with 340 mil fans there's been some other minor revisions as well so the tubing length has been extended and i think there may have been some slight tweaks to the uh, actual pump unit as well and it also comes with a five-year warranty from corsair i've not tested a 420 millimeter aio on the test bench yet so i'm really keen to get this out of the box and see how it performs unlike the ek nucleus that we reviewed recently that come in some fancy packaging this just comes in a standard cardboard box and with a cardboard carton holding everything in place and everything's just packed into little plastic bags for this kind of money you expect the whole experience to be of high quality and that doesn't feel like high quality to me you can get a cpu cooler for less than 100 pounds it's packaged like that but it's not a big deal not everybody cares about packaging uh, a lot of people will just throw it away mm. so it's no big deal but i would like to have seen it packaged a little better than that i mean even on the top of the box there's a bit of damage here from where the cpu blocks poke through a little bit so it's not brilliant but it's perfectly fine. So included inside the box, you get the actual cooler. So the radiator with the tubing and the pump stroke CPU block housing. The radiator is a standard aluminium construction, which is typical of all in one CPU coolers. It's the standard 27 mil thickness. Dimensions of the radiator are 457 millimeters long, 140 millimeters deep, and then 27 millimeter thick. That is one thing you've got to consider with the 420 millimeter coolers is whether it'll fit in your case because not a lot of cases will house this 420 millimeter radiator so if you do buy this make sure it will fit in your case first or you'll be out buying a new case overall design of the radiator pretty typical of aios it's coated in a very nice looking smooth kind of satin black finish as well it does look like a nice high quality finish it's a nice even coating on both sides so it's going to look good when it's installed inside the system and then on both sides of the long edges of the radiator are these little chrome corsair logos they're a nice touch as i said earlier corsairs tweak the length of the tubing so on the uh, lcd xt version you get a 450 millimeter tubing so that'll probably come in handy if you've got this installed at the front of your case with a tubing at the bottom that should give you plenty of 
length on the tubing to reach the CPU. This is a low evaporation rubber tubing and it's covered with this braided sleeving. We used to say this was a premium feature, not so much nowadays, you tend to see this braided sleeving on all all-in-one CPU coolers except the really cheap ones. You can see the tubing is fixed at the radiator side. There's no rotation or movement there, but at the CPU block side, it has got rotary 90 degree fittings on there. So they come in handy when you're trying to maneuver it into place and install it. And they also allow you a bit of movement in the tubing once it is installed to get the tubing in the correct position. So as I mentioned earlier, on top of the pump unit is this uh, IPS LCD display. It's 2.1 inch display, 24 bit color, 30 hertz refresh rate. This can be removed from the uh, top of the block, but you can't rotate it. You actually, if you want to rotate what's on the LCD screen, you do that in the software. And then underneath that is just the uh, pump CPU block unit. It comes with a little uh, protection on it and also with the Intel LGA 1700 and 1200 brackets on there. These slide off really easily. So it's kind of like a universal mounting system. AMD brackets fit on there as well for AM4, AM5. Also support AMD Threadripper as well. So the uh, TR4 brackets, they just slide in place just like the Intel brackets do. These top pieces are ABS molded plastic. At the base of the CPU block is a copper coal plate. It's a micro skive copper coal plate with 128 micro skive fins per inch. This also comes with a pre applied thermal paste. It's Corsair's XTM70 premium thermal paste. It's been removed now because I've been doing some testing with it already. And Corsair claims that the XTM70, which comes on this, does perform better than the non premium paste they used to put on the other coolers. In terms of connectivity of this pump unit, you can see there's quite a lot going on, a lot of cables to manage. There is a big chunky cable that's wrapped in a braided sleeve and got some heat shrink wrap on it. That goes to a 24 pin proprietary cable that will connect to the commander core unit that comes with the cooler. There's also a USB 2.0 motherboard style header there and a three pin fan connection for the pump speed readout. So as well as the cooler, you also get included all the mounting kits for the various sockets that this supports. You get a bag that's labeled Intel and this will be all the mounting kit for LGA 1700, 1200, 11.5X. Also 2011, 2066 are supported as well. You get another bag with labeled AMD Stroke AM4. So this is everything for AM4 and AM5 installation. There's also a bag labeled TR4 retention. So so this is for high-end desktop AMD Threadripper installation. And there's also a bag full of fan screws. Good thing about this as well is you get enough fan screws to install six fans. So if later down the line you decide you want to run a push-pull fan configuration, you've got the screws there. You're not going to be hunting around later through your bits and parts boxes trying to find some screws with the right threads that'll fit the radiator so that's good. You also get included a USB splitter because as well as the USB cable on the pump unit there's also a USB cable that comes from the commander core and this commander core unit is included with the H170i. So this commander core powers the pump and it also controls both the fan speed and the fan RGB. You can connect up to six fans into this commander core unit. The good thing about this commander core unit is when you plug into the fans it will automatically recognize how many LEDs are on the fans and then it will automatically select the correct fan in the software. Also most recent versions of the IQ software will allow you to mix and match fans with the commander core but you can't install voltage control fans in here it only supports PWM fans but if you do plug a voltage control fan in here what will happen is it'll just run at maximum RPM. As I mentioned earlier, the biggest change with the XT version compared to the non-XT version are the fans. The non-XT version came with the ML Elite fans. This XT version comes with AF Elite fans. The AF Elite fans have a fluid dynamic bearing, a speed range of 500 to 1700 RPM with a zero RPM mode, PWM control via IQ Commander Core. They have a maximum noise level of 33.8 decibels at max speed a static pressure of two millimeters H2O, a maximum airflow of 89 cubic feet per minute, and individually addressable RGB LEDs. The fan blades are an opaque design, so they should illuminate with RGB lighting and diffuse the LEDs 
below. You can see on all four mounting points, you've got anti-vibration rubbers. On the frame, you've got a Corsair logo on there. You can also see on the corners, you've got AF Elite printed on there as well. And then on the back of these fans, you have these anti-vortex veins, which Corsair calls air guide technology. And this is supposed to help concentrate the airflow. You've also just got a plain Corsair logo sticker on the back there, not a uh, sticker with loads of information and specifications with fan speed and things like that. And so if you have got the fans installed this way around, that looks better than a, a label that is filled with all that information. And then in terms of the connectivity, so there's a standard four pin PWM fan header that connects up to the commander core. You could potentially connect that up to your motherboard and let the motherboard control the speed. Then you also have this four pin proprietary connection for the RGB that also connects up to the commander core. So that's more or less everything you need to know about the cooler and what comes with it. I'll go through what you can do with this LCD screen using the IQ software later once we get this installed on the test bench. If you want to see more images of the cooler, see the full specification and things like that, don't forget over on kitguru.net there will be a full written review of this CPU cooler. So make sure you head over there and check that out if you do want to see more information. The current KitGuru CPU cooler test bench uses an AMD AM4 platform with an AMD Ryzen 9 5950X CPU overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz, which produces about 260 watts package power. That's enough to push any CPU cooler. Installation process, I'll show you on AM4, which is the same as AM5. It's very similar to Intel installation. The only real difference is with Intel, you need to install this backplate, whereas the uh, AMD AM4 installation uses the stock backplate. First off, you probably want to prepare the cooler. So install the fans to the radiator using the long screws and the washers. And for AMD installations, you'll need to remove the Intel upper mounting brackets and then slide the AM4 stroke AM5 brackets into position. If you're installing this in a case, you might want to leave the connections of the fans to the commander core unit till later, but on the test bench, I like to do it now. So start off by connecting fan one to port number one. So that's the PWM cable, and then the RGB cable connects at the other side, do the same for the other two fans. To prepare the motherboard on AM4, there's not a lot to do. First thing you need is to remove the plastic upper mounting brackets, screw the AM4 standoffs in position. The cooler comes with Corsair's pre-applied thermal compound, but for continuity of testing, we like to use Arctic MX4. Now we can lower the CPU block in position over the standoffs and line it up with the holes in the mounting brackets. Pop the four thumb screws in place and start tightening them down by hand evenly. For the final tightening, you can use a screwdriver and you wanna go from corner to corner and tighten these down as evenly as possible to get the best contact. On the test bench, the radiator mounts are these little brackets. Obviously in your case, you'll need to decide where the best place for the radiator is, whether it's at the front or at the top of the case. You can then pop the LCD screen in position. The short three pin fan cable from the pump needs to be connected to the CPU fan header. That'll stop any CPU alarm warnings from the BIOS going off. Then connect the 24 pin connection from the pump to the commander core unit. The commander core is powered by a SATA power connection, so you need to find a spare SATA power and then connect those up. Then use the USB 2 splitter cable and connect the USB header from the pump and the USB header from the commander core to that. And then just connect that up to a spare USB 2 port on your motherboard. And that's all there is to it really. It's not a difficult installation. It probably takes a little bit longer than with some other coolers that have standard motherboard headers and you connect all the RGB and the fans to the motherboard, all these extra cables for the commander core, does take a little bit more time than a cooler that just uses standard motherboard headers, but it's not difficult. Follow the instructions, you shouldn't go wrong. Even novice users will probably have this installed in about 15 or 20 minutes, so it's not a bad installation process. So the system's powered on, the cooler's up and running, you can see the default RGB lighting. Corsair's kind of toned it down a bit recently, it's got this kind of pastely water colour RGB lighting effects going on. It looks alright as it is with the default effects, you could just leave it like that if you want. I'm not going to go into massive detail on what you can do 
with the IQ software because there's already about a million tutorial videos out there on IQ at the moment. If you're anything like me, you're probably getting a bit bored of hearing about IQ all the time. But I will give you a quick demonstration on what you can do with this cooler. So, as I said, default setup is this kind of pastel watercolour effect. If you just click on the cooler and you go to the fans, you can either set the RGB lighting separately, so you can set the fans separately, the pump separately, or you can use the uh, the link setting, forget what it's called, the lighting link, obviously, and it links everything Corsair to the same kind of RGB effect. So if you just want to set the fan separately, you uh, can click on the lighting layers here and then go through the various presets. Like I say, the standard one is the watercolor one. There's loads of other preset RGB effects that you can do, or you could just pick a static single color. So you could just pick red, green, blue, yellow, whatever color you want. And obviously you can uh, go to the custom ones and mess about with custom RGB lighting effects. And then, as I said, there's the lighting link. So with the lighting link, if you click on one of these, it changes everything that's Corsair in your system to the same RGB lighting effect. And again, default one is the watercolor one, but you can have various other ones like where it's scrolling through colors or just a static color. That's the white, but the white on the RAM looks a little bit different to the white on the fans. That's more of a blue white and that's a, a whiter white on the RAM or you can have it actually changing color depending on the temperature of the system. So green's cold, and I think as it warms up, it goes kind of a yellow, orange, and then it's hot, and it goes to red. So they're the RGB lighting effects. Like I said, I'm not gonna go into great detail. We've seen it all before with IQ. And then if you want to change the what's going on on the LCD screen, you have to go to the screen setup, and then you get an image on screen of what's actually displayed on the LCD screen on the pump. At the moment, I've got it set to clock because I've been messing around with it, but the default one is this one. So that's what you get up as default. You can actually change the design of what's on the LCD screen. So there's various different ones you can scroll through, there are various different designs. And then you can also change what actually shows up on the readout on the screen as well. So currently it's showing the coolant temperature inside the CPU cooler. You can see the RAM temperature. You can look at the GPU fan speed, GPU temperature, the CPU load and CPU package. That's the CPU temperature. And there's loads of other things you can have displayed up on there. Or you can even put your own custom image or like an animated GIF on there as well. So there's loads of possibilities for what you can put on that screen. It's kind of a bit of a gimmick for me, a screen on your CPU cooler, but I can see how it works for people that have got the system up on the desk right next to them and can actually see into the system. This isn't a very useful feature for somebody that maybe has the PC on the floor, but it uh, all obviously integrates really well with IQ. The software seems to work well. It's probably the only RGB software that works pretty well pretty much every time you want to use it and uh, like i say it all integrates brilliantly with other corsair items in your system so we've looked at the features done the installation looked at the rgb and what you can do with the screen now it's the all important performance test so let's begin with noise output as this will give us a good indication of what to expect from thermal performance based on noise the h170i elite lcd xt follows the corsair trend of being loud with the fans at maximum rpm but noise levels are similar to other all-in-one coolers from the likes of asus msi and fantex so it's not uncommon for a triple fan cooler to be loud with the fan speed maxed out but it seems to be an improvement compared with the smaller 280 millimeter Elite Capellix. With the fan set at maximum RPM, the H170i records an average CPU temperature of 54 degrees C. It's up there with some of the best coolers we have tested, but it is beaten by some of the top performing 360 millimeter units from EK and Asus, which is a little disappointing since the H170i has a larger cooling surface area and bigger fans, but it's still a good result. With noise output normalized and limited 
limited to 40 decibels, the H170i Elite LCD XT holds on to its cooling performance and is still up at the top of the chart, but again we see it only performing on par with some of the best 360mm coolers. This again is a good result, but a little disappointing considering that the cooler has an increased cooling surface area. With the PBO test, the most important metrics to look out for are clock multiplier and cooling power, as the temperature difference between coolers is marginal. The Corsair unit is able to cool 244 watts of package power and holds onto a 43 times average multiplier during the test, which is a solid performance, but again it is beaten by other smaller coolers, which is a bit disappointing as the higher clock multiplier means more CPU performance. So it's a bit of a tricky one coming to a conclusion with this CPU cooler because it does perform at a high level, you could see in the charts it's up there with some of the best coolers we've tested, but I did expect a little bit more from it considering it's got a larger surface area, bigger fans, I did expect at this price point for it to be at the top of the chart and maybe even edging away from the competition, but it's not which is a bit of a disappointment. I like the installation process, that's nice and simple. Corsair has got that down to a T now. The installation process has been revised many times with Corsair. The fact that you don't have to mess about with loads of different brackets and screws, the all just slot to the cooler, that's nice and simple. The Commander Core does add a little bit of extra time to the installation, but that does allow it to use the IQ software and we have to say IQ is better than any other software out there. So easy to use and everything just seems to work where a lot of other RGB software can be quite fussy at times. So they are the really good points. The build quality of the cooler looks really good. Everything feels solid. The coating on the radiator, nice and smooth, uniform. It looks good. The CPU block, it's a nice shape. The screen size is just right. So it looks good. It might be a bit different Difficult managing all the cables, there's a lot of wiring for the fans and to the commander core but if you put the effort in you should be able to get the cable management looking pretty good. So the only real downside for me is the price. The fans may be a little bit loud at maximum speed but you can run this with the fans turned down it still forms well but the price at £350 give or take a few pence it is a lot of money especially today when everything seems to be going up in price, people's budgets are stretched, people's wages are stretched more than they've ever been and for that kind of money you could potentially build a custom loop from EK using some of their high-end Velocity 2 parts and the Quantum Kinetic pump res combos which are excellent bits of kit so that is a bit of a sticking point for me at that price point I wanted to see outstanding or exceptional performance beating all the competition but this doesn't do that so it's Tricky one for me to recommend if you already have money invested in Corsair parts and you want the integration with IQ and you desperately need an LCD screen on your CPU cooler then maybe you might consider it but otherwise I'd probably if you're still desperate for a Corsair one, maybe go for the Elite Capellix one that doesn't have the LCD screen. I think that is around about £220, so that's a £130 or more cheaper than this. But it is a nice looking unit. As I say, integration with IQ is great. The integration with other Corsair parts is very good. So it's a tricky one. I'll leave it up to you to decide. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this review of the Corsair IQ H170i Elite LCD XT. I think I've got that name right. That's the last time I've got to say it. Uh, if you have enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Give us a thumbs up on the video as well. Also, if you enjoy what we do here at Kit Guru and you want to help support us, why not head over to our store, pick up some merch, or you could even subscribe to our Patreon. And as always, if you want to catch up on all the in-depth technical reviews, head over to our website.